there's a track winding back to an old-fashioned shack along the road to Gundagai. Where the blue gums are growing and the Murrumbidgee flowing beneath the sunny sky. Where my mother and father are waiting for me and the pals of my childhood once more I will see and no more will I roam cause I get there to my home along the road to Gundagai. Well, I think he's, you're very brave, very courageous and uh, mad. by you see how fast they go and uh, how many wheels they've got and uh, and then you see some of the things on the side of the road such as a piece of a tire and uh, you just gotta hope you're not around when these things uh, shed themselves and what kind of experience am I gonna get Kevin from uh, you're going to work very hard and there's many many miles of absolutely nothing And in the middle of uh, a major windstorm here, luckily it's going the right way, but the visibility is pretty poor. And I'm camped right on the edge of the Australian Bight. The next landmass south is Antarctica. One thing in planning, I didn't realize that it gets dark at five o'clock. So I've got close to 50 kilometers to go. And I've got to try and make it in two hours, otherwise the lights are going on, which is likely. And uh, as you can see, it is dark. And I've just done one thing that I said I'd never do, and that's ride on the Nullarbor in the dark. And as you can see, the weather has changed. Uh, pretty lucky, first rain, heavy rain for three weeks. And uh, I'm about 40 kilometers from the end of the Nullarbor. tonight's accommodation which is highly unusual Gladstone jail I'm sleeping in one of the cells and uh, the other thing is I'm the only person in the prison tonight and uh, it's uh, pretty tough to cycle especially when you may be able to tell there is a headwind here and uh, there's been a headwind for about a thousand kilometers now. Little did I know that I'd be cycling into a headwind for over 1600 kilometers. And it really felt like you were cycling with a hand on your forehead or your brakes full on. In some cases, I just simply cycle myself to a standstill. I'm uh, psychologically and physically just done in tonight. It's been a really, really tough day. Uh, so you're a sheep shearer then? 
Don't yeah, you play trade, right? Yeah, I've been a shearer for 20 odd years, full time. Yeah. Uh, I've been working here at the Australian Shearers Hall of Fame uh, now for uh, yeah, about 10 years. And um, yeah, mainly got out of it because of the, uh, like out of full time shearing because of the drought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you want to buy a boat? <laughs> there could be one for sale in Sydney. Yeah, it might be worn out by the time you get there. No, no, no. One, one careful owner. One careful owner. <laughs> Cheers, Billy. Thanks. No worries. Dave's going to tell me what he thinks about me cycling from Perth to Sydney. Well, apart from the obvious that I think you're a little bit crazy, I also think we don't have enough adventure in our lives. And I think to do an adventure like this is fantastic. And uh, we should all do more of it. Because being a little bit crazy is a good thing. And the last sand that I saw was in Perth, which is 5,000 kilometres away. and. Uh, all I can say, it's a bloody long way. 